Hi guys, we're back with our uh, second in this series entitled Addendums to American History, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the first female to serve as a member of the U.S. Congress, a lady from Montana by the name of Jeanette Rankin. Uh, before I do that, however, I want to mention that if any of you guys are actually watching these presentations and if you have any ideas about uh, uh, topics that you might like for me to explore here, I'd be certainly glad to, uh, to take your, uh, your uh, advice under consideration. So drop me an email, uh, contact me by Skype, whatever, and I'll certainly consider your ideas for our future presentations. All right, our subject today, Jeanette Rankin, a native of Montana. Born uh, there in uh, 1880, as a young woman, she graduated from the University of Montana in 1902, still a rather unusual accomplishment for a female in that day and time to graduate from college. Shortly after that, she uh, spent some time in Boston visiting her brother, who was a student at Harvard, and she became impressed with the poverty that she encountered while touring around the city. So she thought at first about perhaps devoting the remainder of her life to social work, trying to help the impoverished. And she did actually try her hand at this, uh, living and working for a while in uh, California and also in the state of Washington. But that was not quite what she was looking for in terms of a cause in life. So rather soon, she became a very strong supporter of the Women's Suffrage Amendment, working to help achieve uh, the right to vote for women. She uh, returned to her native state of Montana, stood in the forefront of that movement, and in 1914, Montana did indeed grant uh, women in that state uh, the right to vote. Now, by that time, her interest had broadened to the point that not only was she supporting women's rights, but she also had become a very strong supporter of the peace movement and the cause of world peace. And in 1916, running as a Republican, she managed to win election to the U.S. House of Representatives, making her the uh, very first woman to ever serve as a member of either House of Congress. And uh, excuse my poor graphics here, but uh, here's a, uh, a photograph of uh, Jeanette Rankin taken uh, just about the time that uh, she was elected to Congress in uh, 1916. Well, she arrived in Washington just about in time to uh, see President Wilson stand before Congress in April 1917 and ask Congress for a declaration of war against Germany and Germany's allies. And because of her strong support of the peace movement, uh, Jeanette Rankin became one of 50 members, 50 members of the House of Representatives to vote no on war. And not only did she vote no, but she also broke with House protocol by actually saying a few words before she cast her vote. She said this, I quote, I want to stand by my country, but I cannot vote for war, end of quote. Despite her opposition to war, there were other causes that uh, she very strongly supported as a member of Congress. Uh, she supported uh, equal pay for women, something that uh, we're still trying to achieve. She supported birth control causes, also a topic that's still being debated uh, in the hall of, halls of Congress. And uh, she also called for the abolition of child labor in American industry. So no on war, but there were other causes that she very strongly supported. On the other hand, her vote against war uh, did not do anything to win many friends for her back in the uh, rural conservative state of Montana. And in 1918, she lost her seat in Congress when the Montana legislature redrew the boundaries of the congressional districts and she was gerrymandered out of her seat. In a half-hearted kind of fashion, she uh, ran for the uh, United States Senate in 1918, but was defeated in the Republican primary. And after that uh, political defeat for many years, she traveled across the country speaking in behalf of women's rights and also the peace movement. And she tended to divide her time between her place of legal residence, Montana, and the state of Georgia, where she bought a farm just west, uh, west of Athens, Georgia. And not too surprisingly, she was not necessarily popular in that rural conservative state because of her support of the peace movement. Uh, some, in fact, referred to her as a communist. I suppose the thought being that if you support peace, you must therefore be a communist, which she, she certainly was not. 
by 1939, she was uh, back more or less full time in her native state of Montana. And uh, in 1940, she managed, uh, after a long interval, to win a second term in the U.S. House of Representatives. Now, in December 1941, as everybody knows, the Japanese conducted their attack against Pearl Harbor. <clears throat> and the following day, December the 8th, 1941, President Franklin Roosevelt appeared before Congress declaring December 7th to be a day that would, as he said, live in infamy. And, of course, he asked for a declaration of war against Japan. Now, in this particular case, Jeanette Rankin became the only member of either House of Congress to vote no on the declaration of war. And again, she broke with protocol and said a few words before casting her vote. In this case, she said, and I quote, as a woman, I can't go to war and I refuse to send anyone else. I refuse to send anyone else. A very courageous stand, whether you agree with it or not, a very courageous stand. Well, she was denounced by her colleagues in Congress. She was denounced by the press and also almost mobbed as she tried to make her way out of the Capitol building that uh, particular day. Again, because of the unpopularity of her uh, anti-war views, she uh, was not re-elected. In fact, she did not even seek re-election for a, a second term, or I guess I should say a third term, to Congress in uh, 1942. Instead, uh, she uh, abandoned politics, per se, and uh, devoted the rest of her life to traveling around the country, speaking in behalf of women's rights and also uh, the peace movement. In point of fact, in the late 1960s and the early 1970s, Jeanette Rankin was one of the uh, first individuals to, uh, to lead women in conducting protests to American participation in the Vietnam War. And after a long lifetime of campaigning in support of various causes, Jeanette Rankin finally died in California in 1973 at the age of 92. And uh, after her death, the farm, which she had for so many years in Georgia, uh, was sold and the proceeds were used to help establish the Jeanette Rankin Foundation, which uh, to this day continues to give scholarships to low-income women across the United States. And somewhat ironically, uh, Jeanette Rankin's presence is still felt in Washington in the Capitol building because in uh, 1985, a statue honoring her was placed in the U.S. Capitol building. Somewhat ironic in that she was almost mobbed when she cast that uh, anti-war vote in 1941. So that's Jeanette Rankin. She is the uh, first woman to be elected to the United States Congress. And because of her very strong anti-war views, she was the only member of Congress, the only member of Congress to vote against American involvement, both in World War I and in World War II. And you may well disagree with her anti-war views, but uh, certainly you cannot question uh, the lady's courage and her willingness to put her reputation and her career on the line in defense of those things that she so fervently believed in. And quite frankly, there are not uh, too many of us, myself and Curry included, who have uh, that, uh, that kind of courage. So that's Jeanette Rankin, first woman to uh, serve as a member of the U.S. Congress and the only member of Congress to vote against both World War I and World War II. That's it for this episode, guys. I hope you've gotten something out of it. And again, if you have any ideas about other topics you would like explored, I certainly would like to hear from you. But that's it for now. Take care, and uh, I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.